Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us. A lot happening here on the program. Let's break some of this down right now before we actually go live into court. Whenever that should start up again, it should happen in the next half hour or so. Joining me here is attorney Terry Austin and retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. It's great to have you both here. Terry, I'm going to start with you. Where are we left right now in this trial as we start up for today? How's the prosecution been doing at trying to establish this as a case of murder? I think that's going to be difficult for the prosecution. Murder requires the intent, and I think it's clear she did not intend to kill the victim here. But the question will be, was this manslaughter? Was she reckless? Or was this an accident? Was that just something that she, you know, accidentally did? Should she have known that he was not armed? And should she have known that that was her apartment? So I think the jury's going to have to sort through all of that information to determine whether or not, you know, she was reckless or whether or not this was purely an accident. Terry, I'm going to press you a little bit on that in a little bit, because I will say that when you take out your weapon and you fire, you are making that choice. And Cheryl, you agree, you tell me if I'm wrong. When an officer takes out their weapon, points it at an individual, and they open fire, they understand the consequences of what happens there. What's your take on that? Absolutely. I was going to say the same thing. When you pull uh, when you unholster, intent is formed because we understand when we shoot two times in rapid succession like we're taught, like Amber Geiger did, or the tin ring, which is where your heart is, you intend to kill. And that's the big question here. Yes, we can talk all about her going to the wrong apartment and whether or not it was reasonable, but I see it as two parts. That's part one. The next part is what did she do when she got into the apartment? And let's talk about the apartments. Uh, you know, we saw yesterday the testimony of Detective Stephen Cleary, who's from the Dallas Police Department. We saw a lot of uh, testimony yesterday about comparing the different apartments, her apartment and his apartment, how similar, how different. Let's hear what he had to say and we'll break it down. Cheryl, I want to start with you on this. There is, I guess, a sense that they're trying to say that law enforcement was trying to protect their own here with the defendant. Is that what you're getting from this line of testimony? And is that what you've seen uh, them trying to say throughout this case? Well, it seems like that's the inference. And listen, we understand, certainly every law enforcement officer understands, it doesn't matter the agency, it's the culture. And that's what most people outside of law enforcement don't realize how significant police culture is and how it just permeates. Doesn't matter if it's another agency, if they're sheriffs, if they're deputies, if they're rangers, if they're police officers, they're law enforcement, and we protect our own, be it good or be it bad. Now, Terry, the other part of that testimony was also understanding the layout of the apartments. In your opinion, what makes it reasonable for her to have believed that that was her apartment. Because on one hand, when you talk about the red mat, when you talk about the things that were in his apartment, when you talk about the smell of marijuana, the fact that her key would have turned this yellow color from the key fob and not a green light, there's a lot pointing to the fact that she should have known that wasn't her place. But what do you think makes it reasonable for her to believe that was her place? Actually, based on what we've seen so far, Jesse, I don't think it was reasonable. There were just too many red flags here. The biggest red flag was the red carpet. And when you are looking for your apartment, yes, sometimes you can mistake your apartment for someone else's and vice versa. But, you know, the hallway was different. The red carpet, when she opened the door, to your point, the smell of the apartment, the things on the counter. To me, it does not seem reasonable that she would not have realized, no matter how distracted she was, that this was not her apartment. And yes, she should have paused and figured out what was going on before she pulled her gun out and shot the person who she thought was the intruder. Cheryl, so much of this is based upon, you know, her reactions in the apartment. But before we get to that, doesn't an officer have a different sense of awareness in terms of picking up things, you know, when they go to crime scenes or they investigate, they might see things that everyday people just don't see. So were you surprised that you have somebody who was going home and didn't pick up on these cues? Well, I don't believe that she didn't pick up on it. I think that's the story that she's telling and she's going to stick to it. We're trained observers. That's what we do. And listen, the red carpet, the red mat was a, a, a red flag, if you will. But for me, the bigger red flag, Botham Jean had a 50-inch television that he was watching when she came into the room. 
And when we saw the images from Amber's apartment, she had a small, maybe 23, 25-inch TV sitting on a very small, something that almost looked like a TV tray to me. Right. You can't tell me that you walk into a room where someone's watching a 50-inch television and you think, what, it was Christmas while you were gone and someone made a delivery? That's a good point, and, and there's been discussion that maybe you might not notice something that's always in your apartment, but you should sure notice something that's different in your apartment. Now, Terry, the other big thing about the apartments is there's this kind of island uh, green, this kind of, not island green, this kind of like island uh, area where the kitchen is, and I view that as an obstruction. I also view the ironing board as an obstruction, so when we talk about him being a threat to her, because this is also kind of a self-defense argument, that seems to go against it. How could he have been a threat 13, 15 feet away if he's also blocked by that area? Well, that's right, Jesse, and she should have recognized that not only as a police officer, but I think, you know, just in general, when you are walking into your apartment or what you think is your apartment, you should be observing what's going on. And, you know, this individual, apparently he was, you know, sitting there eating his ice cream, watching television, minding his own business, he may have gotten up, you know, it turns out he was in the crouched position, but either way, he has a right to determine who's at my door. And that does not give her justification for just going in, not giving any kind of warning, not saying anything, and just shooting this individual. So I think, you know, she could have hid behind the counter. She could have call for backup. She could have seen that he's not going to be able to attack her directly, but none of that stopped her. She just went ahead and pulled her gun out and shot the individual and asked questions later. What's interesting is when you flip it and we talk about, well, maybe she had a right to defend herself in her home, even though it wasn't her home. Reverse it. He had a right to defend himself in his home from an actual intruder, law enforcement or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. When we come back, clearly a lot more to break down. Keeping a careful eye on the Cortman feed. As soon as it starts up, we'll go live.